Om Namo Narayana. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're reading chapters 57 and 58 of the Ramayana, and I'm just going to confess I'm reading this to purge some frustrations. I was just in an email exchange with someone who made a mistake, told me to do something I'd already done, and then insulted me for their mistake. Oh, it just frustrated me so much. And I was sitting here going, I can either watch a movie or I can read the scripture. And you know what? The movie's good. It's The Hunt for Red October. But I thought, nope, I gotta read some scripture. I gotta focus on Krishna. This is what God is for. And we should turn to him in these moments. That's what they say. It's true. So here we go. Mind, mind this little introduction. I just am being honest with you if I seem a little on edge. So here we are. Chapter 57. Viswamithra's Penance and Trishanku. O Rama, with a sad heart, with a mind greatly upset, making tortured breasts of anger again and again, King Viswamitra thought of his enmity with sage Vashista, and along with his chief queen, went to the southern side, and eating only fruits and roots, performed a great penance. There they had sons dedicated to truth, and Dharma called Havishpanda, Madhushyanda, Dhritha Nedra and Maharendra. After the passage of a thousand years, Lord Brahma, the grandfather of the world, appeared before the king, who did great penance and told him in a sweet voice, You have won the world of royal sages by your great penance. Due to your great many penances done, you have become a royal sage. Seeing this, Lord Brahma, the supreme ruler of the worlds with great luster, went back to heaven along with other devas accompanying him. Hearing Lord Brahma, King Viswamitra felt disgraced and fell into great sorrow, and with rancor said, Though I have done great penance, devas and sages are only recognizing me as a royal sage, and so there is no use of my penance. Deciding like this, that great sage again started doing great penance. At that time, there was a king called Trishanku of the Kakusta dynasty, who was a great votary of truth and who controlled his sense organs. He got an idea of doing a yagna by which he could attain the divine place of devas along with his body, and he then called Fascista and informed him about this idea. That great sage Fascista said that he would not be able to do it, and, disappointed by this answer, the king went to meet the sons of the sage in the southern direction. Trisanku went to the place where the sons of sage Vashista were doing penance, and there he met those one hundred young men. On seeing the sons of his guru, he saluted them, sequentially as per their age. He spoke to those great souls with a downcast face and with folded hands. As a shelter-seeker, I have come to surrender to you, who are helping the needy. Be safe. Sage Vashista has refused my request. I want to do a great yagna. I want your consent for that. I am saluting all of you who are my teacher's sons, requesting that you bless me. I am saluting you who are Brahmins steeped in penance, requesting you to get the yagna performed by me so that I can go to the land of devas with my body. Since Sage Vashista has refused this proposal, I do not have any other option except approaching you, who are his sons. For the clan members of Ikshavaku, you priests are the only recourse, and therefore next to Sage Vashista, you are my gods. Chapter 58. Trishanku and Viswamitra those hundred sons of the sage, hearing the words of King Transhaku, got enraged and told the king like this, Oh, bad-brained one, after the refusal of your teacher, who is the votari of truth, how dare you approach another branch of the same tree of wisdom? For all the members of the clan of Ikshavaku, their priest is the only recourse, and it is highly improper to doubt the words of that priest, who is the votari of truth. When the godlike sage Vashista has said that it is not possible, please tell us how we would be capable of doing it. You are childish, O king, so now go back to your city and the godlike sage Vashista, who is alone capable of performing any yagna for any king in the three words. Having heard their angry words, the king again told them the following. O oh, sages, rich in penance, though you are the sons of my godlike guru, I would find out some other method of achieving my aim. 
Those sons of the sages, hearing those words, which had a horrible implication, became greatly angry and cursed him to become a Chandala. Saying like this, the sages returned to their hermitages. When the night was over, the king became a Chandala, with a blue body, wearing blue cloths, with hateful shaggy hair, wearing garlands from the cremation ground, and wearing iron ornaments instead of gold ornaments. Seeing him in the form of a Chandala, all his ministers left him. His citizens and followers also ran away in a crowd. That highly adamant king burned within himself for a day and night. He approached the great Viswamitra later. Viswamitra, seeing the king rendered useless in the form of a Chandala, became sympathetic to him. Due to the great mercy, that great follower Dharma, who had great luster, told that king, who had this horrible-looking form, Safety to you! O strong son of a king, O mighty Adyotya, for what purpose have you come here? You have become a Chandala due to a curse. That king, who had become a Chandala, hearing those words with folded hands, told to that lord of words, who knew how to use them, I have been spurned by my guru as well as his sons, and my desire remains unfulfilled. O oh, gentle one, I want to go to heaven along with this body. Though I have performed a hundred rituals, I am not able to fulfill my desire. I have never been a liar, and from now on will not speak any lie due to this predicament of me. I am taking this pledge based on the Dharma of Kshatriyas. I have conducted many types of yagnas and was ruling over my subjects with dharma. Many great elders have been happy with my conduct. O oh, saint who is completely following dharma, I developed this desire, but my gurus are not happy with my aim and threw me out. I believe that God is the only divine one, and my manly effort is meaningless. God help us to surmount all problems, and God is my only aim. I desire your grace on this soul in great anguish, and I think that I deserve help from you to succeed in this effort stopped by the gods. I will not approach anyone else. I will not seek protection from anyone else. I merit your help in this, which has been caused by God and human beings. Thus ends this chapter. Thank God that gurus today cannot turn us into something. <laughs> that would be horrible. The worst that we tend to get is fake gurus. They are fake gurus who say that if you leave them, you will be trapped in a cycle of rebirth. You will have things happen to you. I had this guru who used to say that if you leave him, you're screwed. It's a guilt trip to get you to stay with them because they're fake and they want your money or they want your body or they want something. They want you to be abused by them. Thank God we can't have this happen. <laughs> I'm not going to say that I have less anxiety now as when I came into this video because that chapter was full of anxiety. Funny that. And I didn't even really think about what I might be reading today. But lesson learned, it could be worse. And I let this person go who I'll never speak to again. Sorry for my personal rambles. Sometimes I feel it's good uh, <laughs> just to be real. And because uh, we all have our ups and downs. And anyways, sometimes it's just good to read scripture and get lost in it and get lost in the Lord and um, not finish the last hour of the Hunt for Rod October, <laughs> which I've never seen, believe it or not. Anyways, until next time. Harry Krishna, Harry Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Harry Harry. Harry Rama, Harry Rama, Rama Rama, Harry Harry.